Now that we know how to do some basic combinatorics, we can now do combinatorial probability. So if each of these combinations or permutations that you've been calculating the last few videos is equally likely, then it's going to be pretty easy to calculate these probabilities. So we'll do an example to kind of show what the steps would look like. Um, so in this example, we have a class that has 12 juniors and four seniors. And we're trying to split the students up into groups of four so that they can do some group project. What is the probability that each group will have a senior? OK, so um, in order to calculate this probability, the probability that each group has a senior, we need to count up how many ways we can form four groups with a senior in each group. And we also need to calculate the number of ways to form four groups just in general. Um, so here's one combinatorial problem. Here's another combinatorial problem. Order, we can do this denominator first or the numerator first. We'll start off a little bit easier with the denominator. So we're trying to form four groups of four. So imagine we're working on the first group. We have 16 students to choose from. And we're selecting four of them to be in this group, so we have 16 choose four. Now when we get to the next group, there are 12 students left. We're trying to choose four of them, so we have 12 choose four. Third group, there's eight students remaining. We choose four of them. And then finally, in the last group, we have four students remaining, and we choose four of them. So in other words, the number of ways to form four groups of four is 16 choose four times 12 choose four times eight choose four times four choose four. And if we write this all out in terms of factorials and do a bunch of canceling, this will end up equaling 16 factorial divided by 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial. Okay, so we have the denominator. Now we can work on that numerator. So we're trying to figure out the number of ways to form four groups with a senior in each group. So you could think about this in a variety of ways, but I will think about it as like, okay, first, Let's distribute the seniors into the four groups. So if we get to the first senior and we say, which group do you want to be in, A, B, C, D, um, the first senior has four options because none of the groups have a senior yet, so that senior can choose any of those four groups. The second senior will have three options. They pretty much have to be in the group uh, that does not already have the first senior. The third senior has two options, and then the last senior doesn't have really an option, it just has one option. Um, that senior has to go into the group that does not yet have a senior. All right, so what does that mean? Um, we use our multiplication rule. So four options times three times two times one, which is four factorial. Okay, so we have now allocated the four seniors, and now it's time to allocate the 12 juniors. So uh, 12 juniors, and we're trying to put them into four groups, so there's three juniors in each group. We're going to do it like a similar to the denominator here. We get to the first group, we have 12 juniors. We're choosing three of them. We get to the next group, there are nine remaining, because we already allocated three of them. There are nine remaining, so we choose three. We get to the next group, there are six remaining, we choose three. And we get to the last group, there are three students who are juniors, and we need to choose three of them, so three choose three. And again, if we crunch this number out, we get 12 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial, 3 factorial, 3 factorial. All right, so here is the number of ways to distribute the seniors into the four different groups. Here's the number of ways to allocate the 12 juniors into the four different groups. We need to use our multiplication rule to figure out the total number of ways to have one senior and three juniors in each group. So we're going to take 4 factorial and multiply it by this, pro, uh, this number here. So we get 4 factorial times 12 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial, 3 factorial, 3 factorial. All right. So this number, we said, is our numerator. And then this number is our denominator. And of course, if we're going to divide this by this, that's the same thing as multiplying this by 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, divided by 16 factorial, right? We can just flip this fraction over. So we have 4 factorial times 12 factorial divided by 3 factorial four times. 
and we have 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, 4 factorial, divided by 16 factorial. Now we could start to write that out a little bit more. Um, so if we think about 4 factorial divided by 3 factorial, well, 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So that means 4 factorial divided by 3 factorial is just 4. So we can take each one of these and just replace it with a 4. So we're moving this out and replacing it with just the 4. And then we have 16 factorial and 12 factorial. And by a similar sort of process, we get 12 factorial divided by 16 factorial is 1 over 16 times 15 times 14 times 13. And then we still have this little 4 factorial sitting there. We can go ahead and keep crunching things out, and we will end up with a probability of about 12.7%. So if we randomly assign students, then there's about a 12.7% chance that we will end up with a senior in each group.